All right, so welcome back to our TensorFlow series. Uh, this is lesson two. I am Ibrahim Malik, and today we are taking your AI skills to the next level. Remember, in our in our last lesson, we uh, we taught AI to recognize number patterns. Uh, well, today we are going to do something even uh, more exciting. <laughs> we are going to teach a computer to read handwritten numbers. Okay. So imagine having an AI that can look at a number you have written and instantly recognize it. Okay. Uh, that's exactly what we are building today. And the best part is not as complicated as you might think. Okay. So before we dive into the code, let me uh, show you something fascinating about how computers see images. Okay. So the screen that you that you see, look at this grid, right, on your on your screen. While we see a handwritten number, right, the, what we see is is the handwritten number. The computer sees a grid of numbers, specifically uh, a twenty eight by twenty eight grid, where each number repre represents how dark or light that a spot is. Right, zero means completely white, and two fifty five means completely black. So this is crucial to understand. Computers don't see like we do. They process these numbers to find patterns. Uh, think about how you recognize uh, number eight, right? It has two loops, uh, one on top of the other. Uh, the computer finds similar patterns, uh, but in numbers, okay? So to process these patterns, we use something called a neural network. Now, don't let that term intimidate you. As I said in, in previous lecture as well, a neural network is inspired by how our own brains works. Uh, just like we learn to recognize numbers by seeing many examples, our AI will learn by looking at thousands of handwritten numbers, okay? All right, so, so while you are, you know, uh, you see how I, I, I wanna show you how I generated this as well, right? So basically, uh, just like other exercise, we imported TensorFlow, STF, and Matplot library, and, and uh, NumPy, right, uh, as NP. Then we did, uh, then we load, we lo we're loading MNIST dataset, so MNIST, uh, this Keras datasets, MNIST, and then we're going to, uh, training at X, X and Y, X train, Y train, and X test, Y test, right? Uh, then uh, we're telling it to select first image and then create figure with two subplots side by side. All right, uh, plot one, original image, right? Is to what we see, and this this is this is the plot that you saw before, uh, where we, we where we had what we what we see, right? And in the plot two, which is the second grid, right? Uh, it's it's uh, where com what computer sees. Okay. All right. So when you run this, okay, let's just run this again, just for the giggles. Okay, it ran, and it generated the same fives. All right. So that's that's uh, the first part. All right, before we dive into the code, let's quickly understand how AI recognizes images. Uh, uh, computers, as, as, we, as we've said, right, don't see images like we do, they see numbers. Uh, so each pixel uh, in an image has a brightness value between zero, which is black, and 255, which is white. Uh, when we give an image in, uh, to an AI, it analyzes these numbers and tries to find patterns. Yeah. And, and to recognize patterns, we use something called a neural network. I mean, think of it like a human brain. It learns by looking at thousands of examples. Okay. Uh, so let's, you know, let's, let's start coding, all right? We're going to train an AI to recognize handwritten uh, numbers using the MNIST dataset, all right? So again, we are at, already at Collapse, so let's go and open a new notebook. 
All right, now that we have a new notebook, let's give it a title already, and we're calling it TensorFlow Lab 2. Okay, so that's that. Now what we now what we're going to be doing is uh, you know we're going to we're going to you know import uh, a, a import data set from MNIST which uh, contains I believe up seventy thousand images of handwritten digits. Okay, so it comes uh, you know TensorFlow comes uh, with a built-in data set called M MNIST and that's what we're going to use. All right, so let's start by importing. Uh, I'm gonna let's, I'm gonna first title it uh, import tensorflow. flow. Okay, we'll import TensorFlow STF. From TensorFlow, we'll import Keras, and we'll import the Matplot library. Okay, I'm I will also import. NumPy as NP. Okay. Now let me run this. Give it a minute, you know. All right. So it looks like it ran, right? And it was successful. Okay. Which is good. All right. So now what we're going to do next is that we will load the MNIST data set. Okay. So we'll pretty much just I'm gonna load, load MNIST dataset. dataset. Then, all right. And to load the MNIST dataset, data we're going to run this command. You will have the, you will have uh, all the code. So, if you're following along, or if you want to do it again later on, all right. So let's. I've done that. Let's run this. Let's import this. All right. So it's downloading data from TensorFlow, Keras data set, NIST. Okay. That's cool. That's all we needed to know. Uh, I usually just, you know, hide it unless I need it. Otherwise, it gets too crowded. All right. So the next thing that we can, now that we have our data set already imported, now let's do. Uh, you know, let's look at the first image, okay? Show that we'll do, uh, show the first image. All right. And to show the first image, what we're going to do is, and this code basically loads the data set and, right? So what this, this code, you know, as I said, uh, loads the data set and displays the first image, right? The label tells us what number this uh, image represents, okay? Here is the label, okay? All right. So this is what we did. All right, so so now, now let's, you know, before, before training, we need to prepare the data, right? As we have talked about before. So AI models learn faster when numbers are small and simple. So we'll we'll scale pixel values from zero uh, to two fifty five to zero to one. Okay. So so here is what we're gonna do. Let's, okay, and then we're gonna add the code here. So this makes you know uh, this makes. All right. No. Okay. So what we did is we told a uh, machine to that you don't have to you don't have to you know go down the path of looking at every value between zero and two fifty five. We're fine if you're just looking at the the range of zero to one. All right. So that's basically what we did. And then you know what we're doing is here is that you know. Training more efficient now. You know, we can we, we can do a we can, we we can do a better uh, accuracy. I hope we'll get a better accuracy, right? So now now what we'll do is we'll use a neural network with with three layers: an input layer, 
a hidden layer and an output layer. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to define the model first. Okay, we're going to define the model and and our model would say okay right, let's run this model all right so the model is running as well as you can see that layer three shaping flatten pi 37 all right when using sequential models prefer using an input shape object as the first layer of the model instead okay i would go back and hide this all right so with that said let's go to our next step okay uh if you but before we go let's let's look let's look at what is happening here okay you know we have a flattened layer right converts a 28 by 28 image into a 1D array, okay? It, and that's called flattening it. So the first thing if we, this model is doing is flattening. And the second thing is dense layer, right? So 128 neurons process the image. So 128 activation, that means that 128 neurons process the image. And then the softmax layer, the softmax layer, that basically outputs prob probabilities uh, for 10 possible digits, 0 to 9. Now that we have this, let's, let's train this model, okay? So to train this model, before we train it, we'll compile it, all right? Here's what we're going to do. Next is we're going to compile what we've done our model. And the compile, yeah. let's compile it first. Yep, all right. All right, so the next we are going to train the model. All right, so what we're going to do, that sets limits. And, you know, in the training model, we will set the epics, right? Let's restrict the model to five. All right, so after five rounds, it's going to stop. Right? After one of five, for it. All right, so we ran five epics. And that means that the, we uh, asked the machine to run, to get training five times. As you would see, right, I mean, what we're measuring here is, you know, how long it took, right, the latency and step three milliseconds. Look at the accuracy when in the first one is 0.87, but in the second, accuracy goes to 0 0.96, 0 0.97, 0 0.982, and then 0 0.988. So, so the more uh, training the model went through, right, the more the more it was trained, the better it got. Okay. All right. So now that now that we know I've trained the model, right. So what should we do next now? Test it. Now we should evaluate, right? So uh, we're going to test it. We're going to test the model. Let's call it test. And all right. So let's test the law. Great. Okay. Now, now let's make a prediction. Okay. So we all right. Now, first thing that we're going to do. I've already. Did I import NumPy or no? Just to be safe, let me just do this again. I may have already done that, but let me do this again. All right, so what are we gonna do next is we will do some prediction, okay? All right, and do this, okay? All right, so here you have it, and you have you you've already built an AI that can read handwriting, right? But the, if you if you want to train a custom AI model for any task, that's coming in lesson three. But I would I would hope that you'll go back and spend some time. I will provide this code in the uh, as well. Go ahead and start playing around with TensorFlow.
I'll see you in the next lecture.